But when people make the crack that electric cars are like golf carts or they're not cool, do you just show them this? Yeah, it pretty much does the trick. Chris Payne's all-electric Tesla Roadster goes from zero to 60 in about four seconds. Whoa! But he knows just how long and slow the road has been for electric vehicles. 100 years ago, there were more electrics on the road than there were gas cars. Chris's documentary, Who Killed the Electric Car, chronicled their rise back in the 1890s and then again in the 1990s. Both times, car makers gave up on electric because gas-powered cars were cheaper and went further. It's a race. It's a total race. Now Chris has a new film, Revenge of the Electric Car. We will not stop. It shows intense competition among auto companies to mass-produce a new era of plug-in electric vehicles. Why? Gas isn't cheap anymore, and climate change is a growing concern. Even the people who don't care about the environmental reasons, they might do it simply for the wallet reasons. Most people will do it for the wallet reason. I mean, the, the whole success of the electric car is really going to be based on $4 a gallon and $5 a gallon gasoline. Chris owns three EVs, including the Chevy Volt and the new Nissan Leaf. Because of better battery technology, it can travel up to 100 miles on a single charge and plugs right into the wall. Like, you'll be at a friend's house and they're like, uh, excuse me, do you mind while I plug in? And you're like, you know, going through their living room window and plug it <laughs> into their, and they go, how much is this going to cost me? And you go, well, I'll be here for like three hours, so it'll cost you about 75 cents. It sounds simple, but getting Americans behind the electric wheel is not. A recent poll found 57% of us will not buy electric, despite our pain at the pump. Why do you think so many Americans seem to have a hang up about electric, that they just don't think it's going to be reliable? I think most Americans haven't had a chance to drive one. 36-year-old Carlisa Hamagaki made the switch. I never have to stop at a gas station anymore. But she knows most people are confused by EVs. I just shake my head and I go, there's no miles per gallon. It's kilowatt hours. Carlisa no longer spends money on gas, but most electric cars cost about $10,000 more up front than comparable gas cars. That's why the federal government is offering $7,500 tax credits, and many states are giving thousands more. The rebates made this car seem like an affordable any car. Nearly every major car company is coming out with an electric model, including startups such as California-based Coda. It offers a bigger battery that can go as far as 150 miles. At some point in time, we will run out of oil. So energy security plays a very large part uh, in, in pushing EVs. President Obama thinks electric cars will help reduce our dependency on foreign oil. His goal, one million plug-in electric vehicles on the road by 2015. Most experts say that's unlikely. The vehicles are too expensive for most consumers and they simply don't see the benefits, plus they're concerned about rains. The government is trying to change that, spending more than $100 million to build thousands of charging stations around the country. It's a terrific car. So Chris Payne believes the electric car's time has finally come again. I think we're at the beginning of a whole new era right now. And this time he thinks Americans will stay charged up. Ben Tracy, CBS News, Los Angeles.